we are looking at stimulus and it is potentially in trouble this morning. President Trump slamming the recently passed bill last night in a Twitter video. Take a watch. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. I am also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill or else the next administration will have to deliver a COVID relief package and maybe that administration will be me and we will get it done. <laughs> House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seizing on the president's statement announcing she will try to pass a measure to replace the current stimulus checks with $2,000 ones during a pro forma session on Thursday, joining me right now to break all of this down, to look at the COVID relief and spending bills, Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist. Grover, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much Good for to joining be with us. You. First, you've got to assess this plan. You know, we had people on the show this week who were saying, why is there money going to Pakistan? Why is there money going to these foreign places? And this is about COVID relief. Mm -hmm. Assess the situation and tell us what you thought of that plan in terms of the money that was mm -hmm. not devoted to COVID-19 relief? Okay, well, the big win was in the COVID relief. We did not get stuck with paying the bills for corrupt big cities and failed governors. There is not the bailout for New York City and San Francisco and Illinois. That was the Republicans in the Senate under Mitch McConnell stopped that from happening. That was a big, big win. Uh, they also yes. took the three and a half trillion dollars, 3.3 trillion that Nancy Pelosi wanted and took it down dramatically. Uh, so there are tax cuts in what passed. I mean, they get the, the Trump people have gotten rid of six of Obamacare's taxes that hit the middle class. The one that got rid of in this particular package was one 10 million families were hit with higher taxes because Obama made it more difficult under Obamacare, made it more difficult to deduct uh, a very high health care costs. That was permanently rejected. That will not happen again by this bill. So there are a series of actually good tax cuts. Uh, a number of tax cuts were made permanent. On the spending, it is a fraction of what Nancy Pelosi wanted. And specifically, I mean, then there's the second half of the bill, which is just general spending, the general budget. That was put together with COVID. And that's where you see a bunch of money that goes to people overseas. So what do you make of the president's pushback here? He wants $2,000 checks instead of $600. Uh, we got a better than one could possibly have imagined deal, given that Nancy Pelosi had the veto. Um, I would start by signing this bill and then looking at anything else you want to do. Reopening this package doesn't mean it's going to get better. I mean, the Democrats still have the House of Representatives. Yeah. They can stop anything they want to. Uh, so... Yeah, it is point. the president saying, I'm not happy with all this spending. I'm not either. He should say that. Uh, and that's helpful. But we're looking forward now to Biden, who wants to, you know, double the capital gains tax, make it make everybody pay ordinary taxes on capital gains. He wants to have a carbon tax, an energy tax on all Americans, which, of course, hits the middle class. He wants to hit those five million Americans who were damaged by the Obamacare penalty tax. He wants to bring that back. Trump had brought it to zero. Uh, I think Trump should yeah. look at the successes he's had and talk about those because Biden threatens them all. Yeah, I think you make really good points. This is the, the one tax on this screen that bothers me that I think is going to have a major impact on the market and the economy is the capital gains tax. Going from 23.8 percent to 43.4 percent, we're looking at Joe Biden's tax plans here. The former vice president has promised to raise taxes, including the capital gains and the taxes on corporations, if sworn in on January 20th. Yeah. Let me bring Steve Forbes in here because, Steve, these numbers are so much higher than what President Trump had in place after his tax legislation. You have to believe this is going to affect the economy and the markets. What's your take? 
Steve Forbes. Oh, uh, it would more than affect the markets. It would uh, tank them big time. The Dow would lose several thousand points overnight with uh, those tax increases. That's why those two Georgia Senate races are so important. Looks like for the moment, for the moment, the Republicans will retain both seats. But if they don't retain those two seats, then watch out. This economy is going to be badly damaged. The market's going to take a huge hit. And I think the market has been a little too frothy, given what could happen. But I'm wondering with, uh, with uh, Grover, uh, mm -hmm. does he think that the uh, I wonder, Grover, if you think that this new administration is going to try to do by regulation what it can't do if the Republicans keep the Senate directly by taxes, put on massive regulations and hurt the economy elsewhere. But more specifically, Grover, are they going to try to weaponize the IRS again, as was done under the Obama administration, where they're going to go after people like you and others and groups who are going to be fighting this administration? Uh, sadly, yes. I served on the committee, to, uh, the commission to uh, look at the IRS under Clinton, uh, and we saw the Clinton administration went after conservative groups with the IRS, but not left-of-center groups, uh, and they didn't want any investigation or looking into that. And then during Obama, they killed the Tea Party movement by not letting them incorporate uh, and basically set up 501c3s and c4s, which is what normal political movements do. That's why the Tea Party movement fragmented. Yeah. It was destroyed by the IRS as a political movement. Yes, sadly, but I, if they can't change laws, the damage that Biden would do is temporary. That, that is so incredibly wrong, and it is really a shame that the mainstream media will not cover a, a, a sitting administration turning their agencies as weapons on their political enemies. That's what they did with the Russia hoax, turning the, uh, the DOJ and the FBI against Donald Trump. That's why we're going to speak with George Papadopoulos coming up. That's what they did at the IRS as well. It's absolutely disgusting. And by the way, these high-tax moves are forcing people out of these high-tax states. The Brookings Institute estimates that based on initial Census Bureau data, New York and California will both lose a congressional seat next year. Florida will gain two. Texas will gain three. Grover, do you think this exodus is going to spark tax hike reversals in New York or California, or are they just going to stick to their ideologies, even though they are watching revenue walk out the door and they are facing budget shortfalls? Well, uh, Mayor de Blasio of New York City says he has two budgets. One, if the Democrats win in Georgia, he'll just spend everything because the federal government will give him the other people's money to, to bail out New York City, and another budget if the Democrats don't win those two Senate seats in Georgia, because then they're going to have to think about actually getting some control. You did see a message to the Democratic states in Illinois where they tried to get the governor, spent $50 million of his own personal money to try and run a campaign to go to a graduated or progressive income tax. They have a flat rate tax in Illinois, income tax. And the people there in Illinois, voted it down. Other people in California and New York are leaving the state, which is a signal to those states that they should drop all these tax increases. Mm -hmm. Cuomo said he was on the phone begging people to come back to New York, you know, as, as, as COVID was going to wind down, please yeah. come back to New York. Uh, at the end of the day, they will have to reform, but I don't know that that's their first reaction. Uh, both New York mm -hmm. and California legislators are talking about more tax hikes. Well, they're shut down now. No restaurant dining. A lot of stores are closed. Big shutdowns in New York and California. Obviously, that's not doing anything for economic growth. Grover, it's good to see you. We're going to be checking back with you uh, in the future. We'll see you soon. Have a Merry Christmas, Maria. Grover. Thank you so much for being